from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this, the 19th Sunday after Trinity. You are welcome whether you join us here in person or online. Everything that you need, you'll find on the order of service and there are large print ones available at the each door of the church if you would find those easier to use. Our first hymn is hymn number 259, Christ Triumphant Ever Reigning. join together in the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the, all the law and the prophets. See on us, write these laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. 
Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. In a moment of quiet, we bring to mind maybe those times that we have been in pursuit of our own agenda, regardless of the consequences or the impact that it might have on anybody else. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As the glory of this morning, we're going to sing verse 4 of hymn number 355. Collect of the 19th Sunday after Trinity. O God, without you we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to sit for the first reading. The first reading is from the book of Job chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. There was once a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came along them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on earth, and walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in this integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have, they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. This is the word of the Lord. 
as your gradual hymn, we're going to sing hymn number 598, Take This Moment, Sign and Space. <laughs> Hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ, according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 2. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such to as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Leanne. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. At the back of the order of service, you'll find details of the services for October and all the rest of the notices for things going on over the next while. Our Sunday Club has resumed this morning, and you'll see the rest of the dates between now and Christmas for Sunday Club on the service sheet. Next Saturday, of course, is the Autumn Fair here in St. Philip and St. James, and you'll see details about when items may be dropped off during this coming week, and also details about the PJ's art competition being run in conjunction with the Autumn Fair. 
And on the very back page, you'll see details of how, as usual, on the first Sunday of November, we will be having our time of remembering in connection with All Saints and All Souls Day. And again, if you would like me to remember somebody in the service that morning and read out their name and to light a candle, um, please do let me have the names before kind of the middle of the week leading up to that Sunday. And then one final additional notice that arrived in after the service sheet was printed. Um, we are broadcasting on RTE on Sunday, the 15th of October. But the service that will be going out that morning on RTE is actually going to be recorded on the afternoon of Sunday, the 24th of November. So um, the ad hoc choir are going to be very busy because we will need to practice for that and for our very special service in St. Thomas's on the 1st of December to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the consecration of St. Thomas's and also for the carols by candlelight, which will be held here on the evening of the 15th of December. So there will be lots happening. And the ad hoc choir was great on Sunday at the United Harvest Thanksgiving, but we could do with a little bit more a few more people to join it. Now it's called ad hoc because we don't practice and rehearse every week, but do so for special occasions. Um, so if you would like to join the ad hoc choir, and you don't have to be you know, a wonderful singer, just a bit enthusiastic, then we would love to see you and details of the rehearsals will be announced shortly. And finally to say thank you very much to all of you who brought an amazing amount of food in through Buddhistown National School and through the parishes for our harvest last week in St. Thomas's. And thank you to Viola Brady and Julianne Hudson who came along and helped to sort it and to, to take it into the Capuchin Day Centre and the Alice Leahy Trust who were just blown away by the amount of toiletries, non-perishable food items um, and all sorts, uh, pot curries, noodles and porridges that went into them and they asked me to convey their deep appreciation to all of you for your generosity and for your thoughtfulness in doing that. When I was a teenager, I absolutely loved Christa Berg. Uh, I had all his albums, I went to his concerts, I even persuaded my parents to allow me to go to a concert of his in Limerick when I was on a pair of crutches. And against their better judgment, they allowed me to go, entrusting me to the care of my friend's older sibling and her boyfriend. I never told them that I actually lost one of the crutches at the concert um, and had to kind of find it at the end of it. So I absolutely love Christopher Berg. And one of his big um, singles was a song called Spanish Train. And in that song, Spanish Strain, he, it's, a, it's a song that goes on talking about that, that God and the devil are paying chess for souls, and depending on how successful the chess was as to how many souls either went to God or went to Satan. And in our first reading from Job this morning, we hear where that's coming from. And the notion that, that God would be kind of bargaining with Satan about the soul of Job or of anybody else seems to us a very strange kind of thing. And in the writing of the book of Job, people were really trying to use this or to come up with this illustration of trying to say, show how obedient and how faithful Job was, that even when everything was going against him and everything was being thrown against him, that he would still not curse God, that he still remained a man of integrity, a man who was, who was true and faithful to his beliefs and, and didn't concede in any of that, no matter what life threw at him. A huge ask, but in that we see kind of, I suppose, how the agenda of, of different people can often make, you know, huge impact and consequences on the lives of others. And we see that most particularly at this time in our world, and we've seen it throughout history. But when we think of the horror going on now for almost a year, in the Middle East and escalating and getting worse and the daily count of lives being lost. Um, and that's not even having any real cognizance of just the number of injuries and people injured and how life-changing and life-limiting those injuries have been and the trauma that people are going through. And you know, we put up a candle to pray for peace in Ukraine 
and, and we hoped that that candle would only be there for a short time. And now that candle along the back of our altar area, along the back of the sanctuary, has been added to by even more candles, um, not less, as we earnestly pray for that light of peace and that transformation of peace to be known throughout our world. So people come with their own agendas, and that's why in the confession, that little time of quiet preparing for the confession, I suggest that we might look at maybe the agendas that we come with, which we are so intent on that we don't really take into consideration the consequences and the impact of others. Nothing as dramatic as what is happening in the Middle East and in Ukraine at this time. But still in our own way, uh, we can make others feel the very worst of themselves by, by maybe the agenda that we put forward. And in the gospel reading where we heard about Jesus talking to them about, about marriage and about children, and again, when you begin to dig behind the context of this, we look at, well, what's this about? And, and at the time, within the, the context that Jesus was speaking, a man could divorce his wife. Um, and as a result of that, she would be homeless and destitute. And, and if a woman was divorced, she was considered to be unclean and soiled goods, so to speak. So to, to be able to make another marriage, uh, to be married again and to have someone to look after her in the context of the time was something that was very, very rare, if not impossible. So when Jesus is talking about this, while it might seem to us quite a, a hard kind of view of things, he's really talking about the protection of, of women and children who would have had no protection without a, a male in their household. And we might look back and think that's a very odd thing, but only in the 70s in Ireland, as most recently as the 1970s, if a woman was, on, was married and wanted to take out a loan, her husband had to go guarantor. If she was unmarried, then her father would have to go guarantor in a bank loan. She was not considered to be able to take out a bank loan in her own right. And if her father wasn't alive, it would have to be some other male relative who would sign that. But going further back, obviously, the implications of that were much more severe of how somebody could be destitute and homeless. And when we read at the end of that gospel about how Jesus is welcoming the children, because again, the disciples considered these were, you know, small children, they were unimportant, and Jesus was yet emphasizing not just the protection of the most vulnerable in their society at the time, but how they were welcomed and important in the kingdom of God. And all that we say and do as the body of Christ is to kind of to do that and to mirror that. So whether it's bringing in the stuff for the Capuchin Day Center and the Alice Leahy Trust, or doing the other kind of things that we do kind of year in, year out, whether it's the carol singing for the Dublin Simon or, or gathering stuff together uh, to help Santa at Christmas, all of those things are about making those who are the voiceless and maybe the smallest people in terms of status in our society be heard and be looked after. Last Tuesday, we had our diocesan synods for Dublin and Glendalough in Taney. And it's very much a business type meeting where we hear reports of what's gone on in the past and we look at some of the issues that are there currently. And one of the things that the Archbishop was talking about in his presidential address was about being um, calling on the Holy Spirit and being motivated by the Holy Spirit about in gathering people together and in looking after people. And he referred to the census of the Church of Ireland, which is, was done last year and is now being done every year. And I send in the figures on of di four different specified Sundays of what the attendance was and the number of baptisms and confirmations and weddings and funerals and all that kind of stuff. And in the 10 years since 2013, and this will not be a surprise to you, and particularly in the years since COVID, the attendance across the Church of Ireland has dropped by 30%. And this is something that is reflected across every denomination. And in this Dublin area where the population, the greater Dublin area, the population is something about 1.6 to 1.8 million, on any of the four Sundays in 2023, we just about hit 5,000 people worshiping. And again, this is mirrored right across the denominations. So there is a disconnect between what, what we value and we think is important as being part of the body of Christ and what that means and what others perceive that as being important or whether it's necessary at all or not. 
And one of the things that has come out in recent times um, from the, the center of the church is a thing called Pioneer Ministry recognizing that, that many people have never been connected with church or many people have become disconnected for whatever reason. So in various areas around the island of Ireland, each year for 10 years, there will be five new projects. Uh, four happened in this last year. And the one in Dublin is based in Crumlin, where there is a huge kind of connection required from people in terms of their spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental well-being, and also about building Crumlin as a community. And Crumlin, you know, over the years has been in the news with various difficulties happening there, and they want to try and rebuild the community. So there is a new kind of outreach happening in conjunction with St. Catharines and Thomas Street, and we heard all about this on Tuesday night, uh, out of St. Mary's Church in Crumlin, to look at building community and building people without an agenda. And that's kind of the key thing. It's about looking and caring for people without necessarily any agenda. And that is surely what we are called to be as the people and the body of Christ. One of the other things we heard about was that there are 160 children who have no place in school right now. Uh, because of a shortage of teachers, because of a shortage of places, but particularly there is a shortage of places that are for children who have additional needs. So you've heard probably in the media about the need for small classes. So there will be six children in, in a special class for children who've been diagnosed with, with autism. And the idea is that they would have proper teaching and methods of teaching to, to train and fit in with, with their particular needs. Now, we had explored the opportunity, the possibility of doing this in Buddhist Town National School, but, but again, the, the disconnect between the Department of Education saying, you, we need these, but actually providing the resources and the facilities, because it has to be a, a particular type and size and shape of classroom with particular additional needs and resources around it, which would actually be, in addition to the size of the school, another 50% of the school added on. And so there are families with children who are not being able to realize their potential or get the kind of education and learning that they need. And we heard about that at, on Tuesday night. And also about the representations being made by the Church of Ireland to the Minister for Education for those children and the places that they need. And we also heard about the shortage of teachers in the greater Dublin area, because teachers cannot afford, if they could find a place to rent, they often cannot even afford the rent to live in the greater Dublin area. And certainly we know firsthand in Buddhist Town National School, the difficulty in trying to recruit teachers because of those issues. So that's just a small snapshot of just some of the things that were being looked at or being discussed at Diocesan Synod last Tuesday night. And while it is a business meeting, it's about decisions and, and making a difference that goes right down to the grassroots about our worship, our sense of community as a parish, and for the things that people need um, as, as people going about their daily business, trying to look after their families and build their family life and caring for those people spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally. And if we as a Church of Ireland just have a narrow agenda about sorting out our little area or our little patch, then we've lost sight of what we're called to be. So the agenda must always be looked at. What are we open to? What are the possibilities that, that we see for people that we can help to achieve and to realize? It is part of what we are called to be. And we see it particularly where Jesus reached out and connected with those children that others were trying to shoo away, that the smallest and the voiceless and the most vulnerable in society we are called to care for and to look after. All of what we do is about building up the people of God to be the best version of themselves. May we have the vision and the clarity as we look forward based on what we've inherited from the last 200 years in the case of this church and 150 years in St. Thomas's, may we have clarity and vision as to what our present should be and what our future must be as part of the family of God. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able and to join together in the shortened version of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for leadership in our church, for guidance and vision, to give us a clarity of thought and a wideness and generosity of how we view our present and our future. Help us always to be about those who are the most vulnerable in society. Help our worship to uplift us, to inform us, to challenge us and inspire us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Michael, our Archbishop, and for the month of October, we pray for the Diocese of Cashel, Ferns and Osry, for Bishop Adrian Wilkinson. And today in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our neighbors in St. Bridget's, Still Organ, and All Saints in Black Rock, for the clergy Kevin Conroy and Robert Marshall. We pray too for the work of our diocesan councils and the diocesan office and staff. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are leaders of nations, whose agenda is often at the cost of so many. An agenda which may be about more land, more power, more resources, more money. But we think of the terrible human cost that is paid for those agendas. So we pray this morning that those who work in the United Nations and the United Nations Security Council may continue and even increase their efforts to find a way forward that is peaceful and will bring an end to the increasing tensions in the Middle East and an end to conflict. That will bring about an end to the invasion in Ukraine and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. We think of how one part of the world impacts on another, and we're conscious that the forthcoming presidential election in the United States has far-reaching consequences, and so we pray for those who will exercise their right to vote, that they will do so with care, diligence, and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those for whom this is a difficult time. Difficult because of illness or loss. Difficult perhaps because of a toxic environment, either at work or at home. We pray for all in our healer prayer list. And from our parishes at this time, we pray particularly for Tom, Vi, Neil, Christine, and Paul. We pray for those in the care of these parishes, the Black Rock Clinic and the Black Rock Hospice. We pray this morning for the family of James Doherty, the principal across the road in Willow Park School who died tragically yesterday. We pray for his family and for all the pupils and families impacted by his death. We think of his colleagues and those who will face into classrooms tomorrow morning, dealing with the trauma as a result of his tragic death. Lord, on all for whom we have prayed, either silently or out loud, we pray that they would know peace and healing, the balm and of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who we have shared our lives with who are gone home to you. We thank you for each of them and what they have meant to us and for the memories of them that we cherish. And we give thanks for the promise and hope of being together again in your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Jesus said, new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So conscious of some people's desire not to shake hands post-COVID, and others happy to do so, please offer each other the sign of peace in whichever way you feel is appropriate. Peace be with you. Well, hello there. Nice to see you all. I look forward to hearing about all what you did in Sunday Club just a little later on. Oh, do you want to tell us now? Okay, that's fine. Come up here and tell us now what you did. What did you make, Annabelle? We did fortune tellers. You made a what? A fortune? fortune teller. Okay, and what, what did you do with that then? Um, you have to choose the colour and the number and then you get your fortune. I see. And what was your fortune? Do you know what yours was, Indy? Um, I don't know. You don't know. And you've got the stickers as well. Did you get stickers yeah. in Sunday Club? Yeah, and then yeah. Like the stickers. See stickers and then Oh, you put the like, stickers on the side. And then when you, like, when you pick a number, um, you have to count to it and then like, and then open and Oh, look, there's a sticker on the inside that tells you what the sticker says. Yeah. <gasps> that was very exciting. And you did lots of colouring. Yeah, did you do yeah. colouring as well, Alex? Yeah, but and you look, as well as he. But look what I did inside. What did you do inside? <gasps> Oh, and look, there's a sticker saying to be strong and courageous. Yeah. Well done. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Did you have a lot of fun doing that? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for telling us. Now you can hop back to your seats. Well, you can walk if you wash. You don't have to hop. <laughs> Thank you. Have you got all your bits, Lizzie? <laughs> right, let's have the offertory hymn. Number 343, We Love the Place, Oh God.
Now, when you come to singing the Sanctus, there's a little typo in the one that you're supposed to sing. So it is as the kind of heading suggests, it's holy, holy, holy is the Lord, not to the Lord. You can see how my cut and paste from the Gloria didn't quite work. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your son, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
Everybody is very welcome to receive Holy Communion. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, please put your arms across your chest in front of you so I know that's what you wish. You receive the bread at the communion rails and the wine from the common chalice. If you remain at the communion rails, if you would prefer to receive from an individual cup, then after receiving the bread, you go to June, who has the small cups there, and there's a basket on the table for you to put your empty cup into. Draw near and receive in faith.
We join together in the post-communion prayers on page eight. Holy and blessed God, you feed us with the body and blood of your Son and fill us with your Holy Spirit. May we honor you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. You're all very warmly invited to tea, coffee, or juice over in the south transept on this side of the church after this service. And again, particularly for those who maybe arrived in um, after from Sunday Club, all the details with regards to the Autumn Fair, which is next Saturday, all of that, and the PJ's Art Competition you'll find on the back of the Order of Service. Our final hymn, number 712, Tell Out My Soul. Peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.